Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you are visiting for the first time, a big hello and welcome to you. This video discusses some additional ideas I've come up with for funding the Great Australian Housing Scheme, which I mentioned in my previous article titled How to Build 1.2 Million Homes in Five Years. As we all know, Australia is currently facing a significant housing crisis, with hundreds of thousands of people struggling to find affordable, secure accommodation. To address this issue, I put forward a bold and innovative proposal has been put forward to build 1.2 million identical homes over five years. This probably overly ambitious plan of mine leverages economies of scale and standardised design to deliver affordable housing efficiently and cost-effectively. 1. Project Overview The proposal aims to rapidly increase housing supply, achieve cost savings, streamline construction, create affordable housing and stimulate economic growth. The implementation strategy includes centralised manufacturing, optimised supply chains, workforce development and streamlined approvals. Funding would come from national investment, tax incentives and government contributions. The homes would be distributed across Tamworth, Narrabri, Wandoan, Sale and Geraldton with a total project cost of approximately $729 billion. 2. Tough measures in the national interest To ensure the success of this transformative housing initiative, several tough measures may need to be adopted. These measures, while challenging, are essential for achieving long-term housing objectives. The language of tough measures typically serves as a political framing device to justify potentially controversial policies, create a sense of collective responsibility and urgency, and appeal to patriotic sentiment and national unity. 3. Balancing urgency with democratic values While immediate action is necessary to address the housing crisis, this urgency must be balanced against the need for a transparent democratic process protection of civil liberties and individual rights, consideration of impacts on marginalised communities, and maintaining channels for public debate and dissenting voices. 4. Key measures, land acquisition and zoning reform. Implement expedited processes for acquiring suitable land, create special development zones, establish criteria for converting agricultural land, and develop fair compensation mechanisms for affected landowners. 5. Regulatory changes. Modify building codes temporarily, create a centralised approval system, streamline environmental assessments and establish federal mechanisms to override local planning restrictions when necessary. 6. Resource allocation. Prioritise building materials, create incentives for workers to relocate, establish a national construction equipment sharing network and prioritise essential infrastructure development. 7. Financial measures. Create a dedicated financial entity, implement tax benefits, develop guidelines for international investment, and establish strict cost monitoring and control systems. 8. Funding strategies. To generate substantial funding, the scheme proposes selling and restructuring government-owned media assets, aiming to raise approximately $3.5 billion. This includes selling the ABC and SBS to commercial networks and rebranding them to focus on sports and reality TV. Additionally, optimising public service salaries by capping them to $1 below the Prime Minister's compensation could save around $140 million over five years. Nine. In conclusion, combining these strategies, the Great Australian Housing Scheme could see a total projected contribution of approximately $3.61 billion over five years. This influx of funds could significantly boost the project's financial resources, ensuring the successful delivery of affordable housing to all Australians. By addressing the housing crisis, this comprehensive approach also revitalises the media landscape and optimises public sector spending, resulting in a well-rounded and financially sound solution. If you would like to learn more about this, and perhaps read the article this video is based on in full, just visit my website glzww.biz and head directly to the blog page. Please stay on as there is a podcast recording to follow me.
All right, strap yourselves in because today we are diving headfirst into Australia's housing crisis. And we're looking at a plan that's so ambitious, so out there. It's either going to be revolutionary or a complete train wreck. It's certainly raising eyebrows. 1.2 million homes in just five years. That's the goal. 1.2 million, that's the number they're throwing around. Five specific locations picked out. Tamworth, Nairbury, Salopin, and Geraldton. Five communities essentially transformed. In the how. Well, that's what's really got people talking. Mass production. Yeah. Standardized designs. It's like Ikea for houses. That's a good way to put it, actually. You yeah. know, take the principles that made cars affordable, apply them to housing. Economies of scale. Precisely. That's the core idea. But, I mean, come on, 1.2 million homes. How do you even begin to pay for that? That's where things get um, interesting, shall we say. They're proposing some pretty radical funding sources. Like what? Well, for starters, they're talking about selling off government assets, specifically the ABC and SBS. Hold on. They want to sell the ABC. That's going to cause a stir. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I can already see the headlines. And how much are we talking about here? What kind of money could they get from that? Their estimate is about $3.5 billion. Wow. But it's not just the financial side of things. Right. There's the whole question of, you know, public broadcasting. Exactly. Media diversity, independent voices. It's a whole other can of worms. And it doesn't stop there, does it? There's more to this plan. Oh, there's a lot more. They're also looking at restructuring public service salaries. Okay, how so? They're proposing a cap just below the prime minister's pay. Whoa. Yeah, a pretty big change. They think that'll save how much? They're projecting around $140 million over five years. So these are, what, like cost-cutting measures? They're calling them tough measures. Ah. And these are just two examples. There's a whole bunch more where that came from. So expedited land acquisition. Right. Which... I mean, that could mean overriding local planning restrictions. Yeah, potentially. And I guess the argument is, you know, we're in a housing crisis. We need to move fast. That's the justification. But how do you balance that with, you know, respecting communities, the democratic process? It's a tough one for sure. We haven't even talked about the total cost yet. Ah, yes. The big number. How much is this whole thing going to set us back? Brace yourself. It's estimated at $729 billion. $729 billion. That's... More than twice the cost of the NBN. Yeah, it's a massive undertaking, no doubt about it. So I have to ask, I mean, is this really the best way to tackle this? Are there other options, maybe less drastic ones, that we should be looking at? Those are the questions we need to grapple with. We need to weigh the potential benefits against the risks, the unintended consequences. And that's what we're going to be doing as we dig deeper into this plan. So stay tuned because this is just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, so we've talked about the scale, the funding, the tough measures, but let's step back for a second and look at the potential upsides of this plan. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to get caught up in the controversy, but there must be some reasons why people are supporting this, right? Absolutely. There are some genuine potential benefits here. Yeah. And I think the most obvious one is the sheer number of homes they're aiming to build. 1.2 million. Yeah, that's a huge number. Yeah. And if they can pull it off, it would make a real dent in the housing shortage. Especially for you know people who are really struggling to find affordable housing. Exactly. Families, individuals, people who are being priced out of the market. This could be a game changer for them. So potential for real impact there. No doubt about it. And what about the whole mass production thing? The economies of scale. Yeah. Is that really going to work? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Like, can you really build houses the same way you build cars? It's an ambitious idea, for sure. But if they can streamline production, drive down those construction costs. Hmm. That could make a big difference. Yeah, it could mean more affordable homes for everyone. So those are some potential positives. Yeah. But I think it's time to address the elephant in the room. The risks. Yeah, the unintended consequences. Oh, there are plenty of those to consider. Like what? What are some of the biggest concerns? Well, one thing that worries me is the homogeneity. Homogeneity? Yeah, I mean, imagine 1.2 million identical homes. Oh, right. All cookie cutter houses. Exactly. And not just the houses themselves, but the communities. So lack of diversity? Yeah, social diversity, architectural diversity could lead to some pretty sterile environments. And potentially problems down the line, like resale value, things like that. Right. It could be hard to sell a house if it's exactly the same as every other house on the block. And what about the impact on the existing communities? You know, the five locations they've chosen. That's another major concern. Suddenly you've got this huge influx of people. Yeah, it could put a strain on resources, infrastructure. Schools, hospitals. 
transportation. Everything. And then there's the whole issue of, you know, those tough measures. Ah, uh, yes. The expedited land acquisition, the overriding of local planning restrictions. I mean, I get the urgency we need to address the housing crisis. But at what cost? Yeah, how do you balance that with, you know, respecting communities, giving them a voice? It's a tricky situation, no doubt about it. And then, of course, there's the potential impact on media diversity if they sell off the ABC. Right. That's a big one. You know, yes, it might bring in some money in the short term. But what about the long term consequences? But exactly. What happens to independent journalism, to those diverse voices? It's a lot to think about. It really is. This plan, it's like a double edged sword. Yeah. There's potential for good, but also potential for harm. It's forcing us to confront some difficult choices. And to really think about what we're willing to sacrifice to solve this problem. Okay, so we've gone deep, really deep. 1.2 million homes, radical funding, tough measures, the whole shebang. Yeah, we've covered a lot of ground, potential benefits, big risks, those unintended consequences. You know, it's kind of mind-blowing. Like this plan, it's really pushing the limits. It's certainly shaking things up. And it's really got people talking. Yeah, the debate is just getting started. But what strikes me is... Like, the core tension here... Between what? Between, like, short-term gains and long-term consequences. Ah. Uh, you know, selling the ABC, sure, you get a chunk of money right away. But what happens to media diversity down the road? That's the dilemma, isn't it? Do you sacrifice something valuable for a quick fix? It's like no easy answers here. Not at all. Every decision has a trade-off. And it's up to us, I guess, to decide what we're willing to live with. As a society, yeah. I mean, this whole deep dive has really been about that, hasn't it? Like exploring the options, understanding the implications. Weighing the pros and cons. And ultimately forming our own conclusions. Because there's no one right answer. No magic bullet. Nope. So for everyone listening out there. Yeah, keep digging. Keep researching. Keep asking those tough questions. Because this is an issue that affects all of us. And we need to be informed, engaged. Ready to make those tough choices. Absolutely. So that's it for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. And keep those brains working. We'll be back soon with another topic.